Lab number 10 is entitled an Amplitude Modulated Optical Transmitter and Receiver. What we're going to make in this lab is a high gain amplifier which will hook up to a microphone and we'll take your voice and convert it into a light signal. Then we're going to take this light signal and send it down a light pipe which is really going to be a soda straw with black electrical tape wrapped around it. And at the other end of the soda straw will be a transistor but this will be called an optical transistor or a phototransistor where it takes the light that's coming in as a base current and then amplifies that and we're going to then put that to a power amplifier and play it through the speaker on our lab bench. Let's take a look at this uh, high gain amplifier. It consists of two transistors. We've got two stages so you have to put a bit of gain. Since we have a positive power supply here, current would want to flow back this way to ground. And we have a path here for base current, so it would seem reasonable to guess that the transistors are in the active region. We're going to make an amplifier. And that this LED will have a current flowing through it, and then we're going to modulate that current with our voice signal. Now for the transistor we're going to use in lab, the turn on voltage is around 0.65 volts, so we're actually going to measure this. And a DC beta and AC beta around 150. We're going to use a blue LED, and the drop across it is around 2.8 volts. First thing we're going to do is find the DC operating point so we can find the AC parameters and roughly predict the gain of this two-stage amplifier. For DC, this capacitor is an open circuit, and so is this one. So this disconnects the microphone and it's in an equivalent circuit. And then we could put in a model for each transistor in the active region. It's our initial guess, and so let's do that. Between the base and emitter of transistor 1 is a drop of 0.65. Between the collector and the emitter of transistor 1, is a current source of 150 for the DC beta times I sub B, but this time of transistor 1, which is flowing into here. Same thing for transistor 2, we have a base emitter between these two nodes, so I'll hook that up here. Again, a 0.65 approximately, with a base current I sub B2. And then a larger copy of that is produced here with a beta DC times the value of IB2. And then we're assuming that the diode is on. So the drop across it is just its turn on voltage, which is 2.8. Now let's label everything we can on the drawing so we can start to do the analysis. We may make the analysis as easy as possible. All right, the current in this collector is 150 I sub B, and of course the current in the base is I sub B too. So the sum of those two would be flowing in the 6.8K resistor. I'm going to figure out the current that's flowing in here. I'm writing a loop equation just a little bit. Okay, let's make everything enter the node, and this will leave the node. So IB2 is entering. 150 IB2 is entering, and then minus IB1 is entering the node. That's where the minus sign comes from here. To solve for two transistor parameters, the IBs of the transistors and eventually the VCEs, to check that it's in the active region. In analyzing the circuit, we're going to look for a loop that contains only resistors and voltage sources, because then we can use Ohm's law to calculate the drop, and then, of course, we know the value of the voltage. So here's a, here's a path, one possible path where I have just voltage sources and resistances, and, and things in terms of IB1 and IB2. This 9 volts has to equal this drop, which is 6.8K times 150 IB1 plus IB2, plus the drop 0.65, and then plus the drop across here, which is 4.7K times 150 IB2 minus IB1. So that's one equation and two unknowns. The equation's on the following page, and we'll look at that in just a second. I need a second equation to solve for those, and there's a possibility right over here, going around this path back to ground. We seem to find two paths that do not have exactly the same components in them, and so this is true about this case here. So the rise in voltage is 0.65. The drop across this resistor is going to be a minus 270K times IB1, plus the drop across the 4.7K, which is 150 IB2 minus IB1 times 4.7K. So I can, this is our first equation, I can group all the things that multiply IB1 and IB2. And then the second equation, I didn't finish off the steps here, but you can see this is going to get added to this, both being negative. So I'll get 274.7K times IB1, and then 4.7K times 151 turns out to be 709.7K. So here we've got two, two equations, two unknowns. Use Kramer's rule to solve for it. I just put it in my calculator, it solves two by two matrices, and so I found that IB1 was 5.952 microamps and IB2 was 3.2196 microamps, and so that's positive, so that checks, and that's positive, so that checks. So that's, we're about halfway through our checks then. The collector current is just 
the beta f or the dc beta times the base current. So we've got a little bit less than a, a milliamp in both cases here. Now I need to check that the collector emitter voltages of transistor 1 and transistor 2 are both greater than the saturation voltage. Now it wasn't listed in our problem, but you can assume it's around 2 tenths of a volt or so. We want to be way away from that point, so we're out in the active region. So let's, let's go back and look at the schematic here. So I want to solve for the collector emitter of transistor 1. And of course, the 9 volts here has to be equal to this drop plus this drop. And so the collector emitter voltage should be 9 volts minus the drop across the 6.8K resistor, which is 6.8K times 150 IB1 plus IB2. But we know the values of IB1 and IB2. The collector emitter of transistor 2, here we just take this node voltage, which is going to be minus 2.8 minus 4.7k times the collector current of transistor 2, and then plus 9. And then this node voltage here, I could go to ground this way, or a little bit easier to go back to ground this way, since I know this is minus 0.65, and then I just solve the equations for this. You can do either one, you get the same answer. So on the bottom of page 2, you'll see the calculations, and I've got about 3 volts across the collector emitter of transistor 1, and about 1.67 for transistor 2. So, so this is greater than 0.2 and so is this, so that checks. We also have a diode current which is equal to the collector current and that's also positive. So all of our assumptions check. So we are in the active region. So we can use the DC information, the calculator AC models. Let's assume that A to F is equal to 1 and we're operating at about temp room temperature, so V sub T is around 26 millivolts. With the two values of base current we have, we've got for RPi1 4.37K and for RPi2 8.08K. And our AC beta is the same as our DC beta, the same as beta F, about 150. We also have a resistance associated with the LED, which is likewise A to V sub T over, in this case, I sub D, which is the same as the collector current of transistor 2. It gives us around 54 ohms. Now that's in series with 4.7K, so you basically could throw it away, treat it as if it were zero. Try to get a ballpark number as we do things. Okay, now we need to find our AC model to predict our AC gain and see if we've got enough gain for this microphone. We're going to need several thousand to amplify the signal. You could use an op amp, and we'll talk a little bit about this at the end of the lecture. But some of the advantages of using a transistor amplifier is you get a lot more gain in the audio band. All right, so let's go back to the schematic on the previous page. We're going to short circuit the large capacitors. So there's C sub A here and C sub B here have a power supply here we can short to ground, and a power supply here we can short to ground. And here is the base emitter of transistor 1, and that's where our, our pi 1 goes, and then the collector emitter is where the AC current gain of beta AC times IV1. And here's the base and emitter of transistor 2, and the collector and emitter of transistor 2, again, putting our pi and the AC beta times IV2. And here's IV2 and here's IV1. Now it's usually easier to redraw this so you can kind of see where everything's going, so let's just do that. So here's the microphone and it's 7 in resistance. So here's my R in and V microphone. And likewise, here's where V in is. And then from here back to ground, I've got R pi 1 with IB1 in it. And then this resistor actually goes back to ground because of the short circuit. So that feedback resistor was used to bias the transistor, but actually doesn't have much of an effect because it's in parallel with a much smaller resistance. Okay, then the next node over here, we've got a current source back to ground. It's this, and then the 6.8K is in parallel with that. And then here's our Pi 2, which is also grounded. So that's this here with IB2 going through it. And lastly, the current source that's here is grounded. So here's our 150 IB2. And then this resistor goes back to ground at 4.7K. Now the diode current is actually going in this direction. We're going to solve for it in just a little bit. So let's analyze the circuit if we can. We'll start at the output side and work our way back to the input side. So the, the output voltage is just this current flowing into the 4.7K resistor. So it's going to be a minus 150 IB2 times 4.7K. And this is expression here. And then I got to solve for the current IB2. You can do that a variety of ways, but you could use a current divider. So the current in this resistor is the other resistor, which is 6.8K, over the sum of the two, times the current in this direction, which is a minus 150 IB1. I can substitute it, that in for IB2. So I've got V out now in terms of IB1. And then Vn is right here, and it's right across the R pi 1. So it's just Vn divided by 
4.37k for the current I sub V1. So now I've got V out in terms of V in, which notice here I've got the AC beta twice. So I'm getting that squared. That's going to give me a lot of gain, around 11,000. The input impedance is just the 270k in parallel with the 4.37k. So very close to the 4.37k. The current in the LED, this is AC wise, the biasing is the same as the collector current of transistor 2, is going to be equal to V out divided by 4.7k, but it was pointing in the opposite direction here, so it's going to be a negative of what this voltage is here. Well, V out is 11,059 times Vn, so it's going to give us a value of minus 2.35 times Vn. Now, Vn is, is going to be in microvolts, so what we're doing then is adding in an AC current that's in the dozens of microvolts range. So we'll be adding that to the DC current that's there, which is in the order of 480 microamps or so. So we'll be varying that current. We don't want it to go negative because we'll shut the LED off, but, but we do need quite a bit of gain. And I, I play with this a lot to get the values that are selected here because they're very dependent on the specific LED. If you compare it back to the input current, the input current times 4.3k is the input voltage, and so we're getting a current gain of about 10,000. Unless let's put together the AC and the DC results. If the signals are small enough, we can then add the AC plus the DC and get the, the final waveforms. Purposely didn't block the DC here just to show you in lab that we do have a DC level with an AC riding on top of it. V out is just 11,059 times Vn, and then the value of V out in terms of our DC, let's go back to our schematic back on page one. So V out here is equal to this drop plus this drop. That's going to be our DC level. We can calculate that as the collector emitter voltage, which was 1.67. And then the drop across this resistor, we could calculate with our DC results, and it's 4.7K, and the current that was flowing in here was 151 IB2 minus IB1. Or we could go actually go back around the loop if we wanted to again, too, for DC. But that turns out to be a total of 3.93 volts but from here, here back to ground. Let's go back to page four. So I've got a DC level plus an AC gain times a microphone. So we'll see that combined effect. And purposely, I purposely did this in lab just to show you that if you don't block the DC, there is a DC level there. Also calculate the diode current. We have a, a biasing that's equal to the collector current of transistor two. And then we had this gain times Vn. Now relating that back to the microphone, we have a voltage divider with the input resistance and the feminine resistance. And that's very close to one, so we're going to get pretty much the same number times the microphone voltage. So again, we've got something here in microamps, hundreds of microamps, and as we talk into here, we'll be in the dozens, if not hundreds, of microvolts, microvolts and then that'll give us a number that, that will allow us to to vary this week, and we don't want this to go negative because the dial is shut off. But as you're talking in the microphone, you'll see that the LED will be blinking. If you talk loud enough, you can actually shut the thing off. Play with that as you do the experiment. 